everybody? Do right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Ground Rash because they just came out with an Intel report. This one is number 12, September news. Let's go ahead and hop into it. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Time for another Intel report where we go over the latest happenings in development as upcoming Ground Branch update version 1033 continues to evolve. First thing that we got here is Ground Branch on GeForce Now soon uh, contradiction as mentioned last month ground branch is coming to geforce now nvidia's cloud gaming service which will make the game accessible to a whole new audience of subscribers nvidia has confirmed that this will happen sometime this month as they show a picture of geforce now of september new releases and ground branch is at the very bottom right there i do not use this service so i'm not entirely sure if this is good or not but i think i've heard people say that it's actually surprisingly good right because this is just like streaming like the game is being stream to you i wonder if this means that this is like a constant revenue source for ground branch i'm not sure how it works on the developer side do they get paid like every month or something that's what i'd like to know because if it is like that then that's great more funding for ground branch we'll be sure to make a quick announcement when it goes live all right well that was cool moving on new coder in the house last month we announced the addition of charles schmidt and sound designer zach reagan to the team but some of you may remember that we still had a vacant senior programmer spot and this month we're happy to announce that that is no longer the case as chris Chris Brocken joins us in a senior programmer capacity. Oh, cool. Chris' resume is too humiliating for us to fully cite. Humiliating? As in better than yours? Or? But it should suffice to say he has been working for Acer before and has a master's in astrophysics. In addition to his general programming background, Chris has industry experience in UI, tech art, gameplay engineering, and of course, the mandatory Unreal Engine skills. Damn, that's a hell of a catch. The biggest benefit of getting Chris on board is going to be speeding up the AI development, which is of course great great news for most of the ground branch player base let's all welcome chris to the team we'll take a quick look at some of his initial work next Oh, so he's already on the ball. Okay, cool. Some AI news. As announced in February, AI is being rebuilt using Kithra AI, which we looked at in a previous video. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link to it if I remember where the hell it was. A specialized middleware. Though implementing it is still very much under the hood at this point, meaning nothing cool to showcase, unfortunately. Chris has taken the time to start prototyping a friendly AI ordering system. Ooh, this is new. Let's take a look at this. No valid target, patrolling PB, KY, bad guy 2, no valid order. Okay, so we got like a radio menu here. Okay, so I'm assuming this means, well, move the throw a grenade, maybe call out light. This looks pretty basic and bare bones at the moment. So I probably don't have too much to really look at, but it's cool to see that we actually have AI on our side now. Let's hope it comes fairly soon. Underneath this, it says patches and call signs. Continuing the work on patches for headgear and shirts, we now have call sign patches in game for ease of identifying officers on the field. Ooh, yo, that looks pretty dope. Is this the new map too? In the background kind of looks like it hrn interesting players can choose a three letter call sign code or have one generated automatically when changing names server can also apply call sign patch policy for example to force players to have a call sign based on their chosen element a b c d to override any selection by each player there is no need to choose a call sign patch in the character editor these are added automatically whenever a call sign is used okay cool moving on to the next thing here depot is getting a visual update environmental artist will has moved on to giving depot a thematic pass to get it more in line with storage facility which is set in the same region here are some preview shots wow depot has definitely changed i'll see this is a map remaster here i think zero just released like a video of like a map remaster and like all they did was just like redo the lights it's like bruh remaster okay but anyways man this looks freaking good holy cow man my ground branch is just becoming like a completely different game from when it started out like before it just looked like kind of ps2 graphics but now the visuals are just looking gorgeous holy hell moving on to the next picture man god damn this looks so much better holy cow like this is just like a whole new area right here pretty much depot was a massive map too even though it had like a bunch of trees it still kind of did feel a little like plain but god damn they're adding so much to this moving on to the next picture look at they even have like a little village here looks like a little abandoned though that's freaking wild we got one two three four maybe five houses here and it looks like a realistic village too it doesn't look like small town which is just like cinder blocks damn this is looking really good now my biggest issue that i had with this map is the uh the fact that it was just really unoptimized that was my biggest issue with this map and i hope that they fix that because like their biggest maps have never been that optimized i mean it looks really good don't get me wrong but man the optimization has always been pretty poopy on this map but moving on to the next thing new storage facility previews the storage facility map overhaul is done so why not appreciate some ultra wide shots of the beauty and different lighting oh my god what a gorgeous looking i mean <laughs> 
<laughs> if I was actually here in real life, I'd be like, man, what a dump. But in a video game, it's like, wow, this looks gorgeous as hell. Look at they even have stuff across the river. Man, that detail. I don't know if we're going to be able to go across over there. Oh, doubt it. But man, this really does look like a Russian area. It kind of reminds me of Metro Exodus. I wonder if they, that's where they got the idea. This is pretty dope. I cannot wait to try out this update. It's going to be awesome. All right, moving on to the next thing. We got another picture here. This one's like a close-up of one of those buoys. I think that's what you call them. Buoys? It's a thing that floats in the water. I forget what it's called. Everything is just like washed up on shore. They said that they were basing this off of something. I forget what, but I wonder what made these ships to like just come in and crash on the shore. Maybe it was just a storm, probably. Right, a bad storm. Moving on to the next picture. God damn, man. This looks gorgeous gorgeous very very nice moving on to the next thing audio optimization continues this month we have further optimized the audio side of things by lowering the amount of memory usage by at least half based on performance testing on small town with bots okay cool but can we please get it up to 50 i like a challenge this was done by optimizing how weapon sounds were loaded now instead of all weapon sounds being stored at all times only the ones in use during a particular mission or round are stored this method will also allow for easier audio modding in the future as you only need to edit and rebuild the sound bank for the weapon you want to mod instead of rebuilding the entire weapon sound bank for just one weapon that sounds great combined with the cpu optimization that we detailed last month we're looking at roughly a 50 percent gain in audio performance performance so far not too shabby they mentioned here that weapon tails and other sounds are continually being reworked and improved alongside the optimization work all right cool the next thing here is it talks about doors a game designer's nightmare doors are having a part of their logic redone to address one of the main issues getting both players and ai stuck in them oh i've seen that like so many times i didn't know it was like a big problem though some degree of physics simulation is also being added in order to once again allow cracked doors that is partially open ones to be pushed by just walking into them we're also hoping to get a nicer looking effect for exploding doors while we're at it i mean i always thought that the doors were actually pretty nice looking already but they want to make it look better by all means more vfx progress work on particle effects continues as charles converts all of the existing vfx to a newer niagara system before reworking and approving them he has zeroed in on bullet impacts and has recently started improving the breaching charge explosion oh they have a bunch of videos here let's take a look at them let's see the first one is called bullet impact vfx VFX tiles. Ooh, hold on. I mean, it looks pretty good. Like, I think Ready or Not just showed off something like this too, which is interesting. That's pretty cool. Okay, moving on to the next one. This one is called Breaching Charge VFX Day. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, not too bad. That kind of looks the same as what it does now. Okay, this one's in slow motion. Oh! Cool. How it's not exactly off the door. All right, cool. Moving on to the next one. This next one is called Breaching Charge VFX Dusk. So at night. Oh, is it going to make like a bright light? Eh, I mean, kind of weak sauce of being real, but still, the explosion looks kind of cool. I mean, I don't. To be fair, I don't actually know how big breaching charges are. Do you see light with these things when they explode, or is it just like a puff of smoke? I wouldn't even know. Somebody would have to tell me down in the comments. But moving on to the next thing here, we've got animations. Though we cannot showcase it at this time for various annoying reasons, we can confirm that some basic new manipulation animations will make it to version 1033. Players will actually start seeing their character flip magnifiers on and off. Yo. Flick the Spectre DR's lever to the front and back. Ho ho. And pull their night vision goggles up and down. All right. A basic magic hand type of animation for a door interaction may also be present as a placeholder that still beats telekinesis, right? I mean, to be honest, I don't think about these types of things, but it's always nice to see that these developers want to add details to their games. That's what makes them great. Mike has also been busy with hand poses and reload sequences to fit the new updated weapon models, which we'll cover next. Weapon models. Weapons and related assets continue to be created and revamped as needed by our trusted contractors between brand new items and replacements has so far allowed us to add over a dozen new weapon models to version 1033 let's make a quick list starting with the new weapons the mk17 cqc dmr the wz88 i'm not sure if that's how you 
pronounce that i doubt it the ak-105 the pkm the pmm the m24 sws if i mispronounce these names please let me know i'm not very familiar with a lot of these weapons speaking of which here's how that last one turned out oh oh baby god damn look at this freaking beauty i think this is like ground branch's first bolt action rifle oh man i hope they add the motion that would be so amazing and a car 98 hell give me a bunch of bolt action models i'd play with it but man what a gorgeous looking rifle here's another picture of the bolt action actually moving backwards here god damn i cannot wait now for replacement updates what wait what do they mean by replacements do they mean like actually like updating the model or is it like they're just like getting rid of the gun i hope it's not the latter i would like to see replacements i hate it when developers take away weapons huge pet peeve with me just like no don't take them away keep adding on but anyways the m1911a1 the ak-74m ak-74u ak-105 alpha replacing the ak-74mi aks-74u alpha replacing the ak-74mi cqb B, the SVD M16A4. Currently in development, the old model has issues in both scaling and quality consistency. Okay. And that's not even to mention extra parts on the new updated attachments that will make their way into the game as we go. As promised, here's the new AK74M as well as the AK105 with tactical Zenitco furniture. And I'll be honest, I don't see like a difference. But maybe you do? I still think these are gorgeous weapons, but I don't really see a difference between the one that was in game and this one. Here's the next one here. Very gorgeous weapon, but I don't see the difference. But maybe you do. Let me know down in the comments. More renders on the AK Productions Artisan right here. Okay, let's take a look. Last time we looked at one of these things, they actually uh, showed off a bunch of weapons that weren't announced, but they had the Ground Branch logo on them. So maybe they might show off some here. Gorgeous weapons. But honestly, I, I I I cannot see the difference. So yeah, we can also confirm that the A2 carry handle is finally coming for the M16 M4 series of weapons. That's right, we caved. Oh, I think I remember seeing this freaking uh, Reddit post. Why focus on the visuals? We want better AI. From time to time, part of the player base questions our priorities, which is understandable. Why are we putting resources on models, effects, or any other superficial thing when there are areas of development in more urgent need of attention? Well, that is simply because not everyone on the team can do everything for example telling our art guys to shift their focus to gameplay code will only result in neither art or gameplay seeing progress i mean he's got a good point there like an artist probably doesn't know too much about coding and i think they only have like one coder i think expecting that guy to fucking do ai and do good ai is impossible right well not fully impossible but it's gonna take a very long time if it's just one dude working on it so while progress may be slow in certain areas others may and should continue to develop normally that said ai has seen little progress in the last couple of updates but is now getting worked on intensively beginning with the integration of the new kithra middleware ai is one of the harder aspects of game development yeah very true even AAA developers have a hard time making actual good ai like i've rarely seen stellar ai i think the last one that i think i remember seeing was from red dead redemption 2 i think they have like the best ai that i can think of i would say metro x is their ai isn't that great it's certainly better than ground branches but not as good good and the result won't be immediate it's an ongoing task that will spread over the next few updates and beyond but the key takeaway here is that we are all now systems ago in all areas of development yeah again ai development is not something that could just be done within a week like that takes time that's probably like ground branch's biggest crutch right there the ai their maps are great their guns are great the customization is fucking fantastic Mwah. the new animations i fucking love it but the ai is like a mix they can either be really dumb as rocks or they can sometimes be bs not the worst ai i've seen but you know so i think ai is like their main thing that they need to really work on that and optimization because you get too many people in a match that optimization freaking tanks or you get into a map that's like really big and has a lot of assets the optimization tank uh i think optimization has definitely gotten better but i wouldn't say that it's there just yet but overall this was a pretty good intel update report not as big as the previous one that we had but hey there was still a lot of meat on this bone not gonna lie what were your thoughts let me know down below in the comments because i'm gonna end the video here if you enjoy the fact that i cover games like ground branch then be sure to like the video share the video comment down below if you're someone that's new to the channel be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on ground branch or any other game that i decide to cover and if you're someone that would like to support the channel check out my patreon or hop on that join button send a thank you any donation helps Bye bye